Hey everybody, welcome to The Fly Life. Today we're going to be picking up a hawker and taking it to London. It's going to be my first trip over to London and uh, across, so it's going to be kind of interesting for me and hopefully maybe educational for both of us. So y'all keep watching and uh, we'll learn how to cross the Atlantic together. Just crossed the border from Maine into Canada, so we have about an hour left. Um, to get in. Weather looks pretty good in Canada. We might have to shoot a, an approach a little bit, but it's not going to be down to minimums or anything. So we're going to get on the ground, call Can Pass, clear customs, uh, refuel real quick, and uh, get back on our way over to Iceland. So it should be fairly smooth. 1818, uh, contact Center down 1244. Should be pretty smooth. Uh, Okay. Should be pretty smooth going over there. Uh, beautiful. And uh, right now, Canada looks exactly like the U.S. did. All I see is white clouds. But uh, here we are. The camera adjust. So, yeah, it says we're going to have about 55 minutes left. And we'll be on our way. Made it into Canada, so we just got our fuel, got our catering, and uh, no passengers. Didn't have to clear customs here, they just do it over the phone. So it's gonna be a pretty quick, quick turn here. On the ground, maybe 20 minutes, and then right back out to Ireland. Take a look at what we're seeing out here. Woo, slippery. <laughs> oh my gosh. snow and ice everywhere but it's beautiful and uh, it's really not too cold it's it's above freezing but the so much snow there's a really neat approach coming in we could see the it was a really neat approach uh, coming in we could see uh, hundreds of snowmobiles out in the lakes, rivers, bay area buzzing around. Uh, makes me jealous. Wish I could stay and, and have a night here and go on a snowmobile tour. That'd be pretty cool. We are level now at 33,000 feet, uh, well on our way over towards Iceland. We're about to cross our first manual reporting point, and uh, when we do, we're going to give Gander a call, either on our normal frequency, or we have to come over here to this HF box, put in our 5616, and we'll call them with uh, 5616, our tail number, let them know what we're crossing over, what altitude we're at, what speed we're going, and then what our next fix is gonna be, what time we plan to cross that, and then what the next fix is after that. And uh, after we do that, they should give us a uh, the next frequency that we'll, we'll call them on an HF and uh, go from there. It's, uh, it's kind of an interesting thing, something I've never had to deal with before, so uh, kind of learning this together. Yeah. Report. Can radio go ahead? Five one three three zero over six one north four zero west. At six three north three zero west uh, two one zero two Zulu. Epony next. Is the time for forty west? Uh, Yes, 61 north 40 west, 
crossed at 2022. Okay, crossing the boundary with Iceland. Crossing the boundary, it's about 32 west. Iceland's on 127 decimal 85. 12785. Monitor HF 5616 till the boundary. Alright, so we'll monitor 5616 till the boundary. Then they'll be on 127.85. Radio. Alright, well. That next fix is done. We've got an hour and 14 minutes left. And uh, looks like the tops of these clouds are starting to come up to us here at 33,000 to flip you around. And it, it's actually really pretty. It's just a thin little layer. But you can see us skirting along it pretty quick. Unfortunately, we've yet to see a drop of water because We've been stuck with this cloud bank beneath us the entire way, but it's, uh, it's definitely coming up on us. I can, I can see it. We're getting vectors to the final approach course here in London. It's been crazy busy, lots of people talking, and I'm surprised I was even able to get this much time in. But like, real quick, let me show y'all what we're looking at. I don't know how well y'all will be able to see that. But that's the River Thames. And London goes for as far as the eye can see. All directions from here, it seems. It's beautiful, the countryside, we got just a couple peaks, it was real beautiful, but mostly this whole trip, it's just been clouds. So, anyways, hopefully we'll get some footage here on the ground.
just checked into the hotel here in London, about to go out, try to get some photos of Big Ben and the Ferris wheel if I still can. It's still open. I just want to show you all this beautiful hotel room that we got put up in. Small, of course, but why can't I have a TV that's built into a mirror? I mean, that's not asking too much, is it? It's a little cold, so I might be shaking too much. But right behind me is Westminster Abbey. And then over here is a Queen Elizabeth II Center. And just right here in the middle of history. Beautiful here. So right up here, you can barely see it, is Big Ben. And unfortunately, they're working on it, renewing it, and so it's all covered up and I can't get a picture of Big Ben while I'm in London. Which is a major bummer. But the area around it is still stunning. Alright, well, I just left a uh, electronic shop here and uh, I left my tripod at home. My little handheld goofy tripod that grips on everything. So now I'm headed over to the British Museum and I'm uh, gonna see, I guess, what that's all about. Uh, our captain's gonna meet me out there. He uh, woke up late. I'm trying to get my body clock adjusted because we're gonna be waking up real soon uh, tomorrow. So, anyways, so far it's beautiful here and uh, nice. I, I gotta have a little bit of a coat. Unfortunately, all I have is my leather coat. So, but that's probably too much. It's, it's real nice though, real crowded, always traffic. So this is the inside of the British Museum and uh, I was a little disappointed. I, I mean, it's beautiful, everything here is great, but I was looking for a museum on British history and this is more of like a world history museum, you know, areas on Africa and North America. <laughs> so uh, I'm gonna keep looking. We'll, uh, we'll keep exploring around town, see if we can find something about British history. All right, so here is the daylight is Westminster Abbey. Let me see if I can get that. There you go. Definitely a different view in the daylight. And uh, just all the architecture here is beautiful. Super crowded. Um, traffic here is terrible, apparently, all the time. Uh, it's just like going to New York or anything. Just leaving Westminster Abbey. Unfortunately, they wouldn't let me take any pictures or video inside, so I'll input some pictures here in just a second uh, that I find off the internet. They're better anyways than what I'd get. But uh, it was beautiful. Um, Thousand-year-old church, and uh, I mean, you could see all the the kings, queens, uh, Sir Isaac Newton, lots of people there. So it's really neat to see. Definitely, if you can only see one thing here, that might be the thing. I'm guessing because I'm only gonna get to see one thing here. It's a little cold and uh, get tired of walking after walking through that church for the last two hours. So we're in an Uber now, heading over to Buckingham Palace. Passing off our left side is uh, London Eye, right there. And uh, a lot of traffic, so we might get a little bit of a tour of London here, but it should be a pretty quick ride. Here is Buckingham Palace. <laughs> And uh, unfortunately I missed changing the guards, but one of the problems with our job is we can't buy like tickets to things, you know, to tours and whatnot, because they're always sold out six months in advance, and I don't know about the trip until a week in advance. So it's, uh, it's never possible to get those really exclusive tickets. But you can always still come see the sights and uh, get a few pictures and always something to find.
and see Shakespeare's Globe Theater, and it's a replica of the original Shakespeare Theater. Still holds uh, uh, active plays and all here currently. And uh, again, one of those things that if I had been able to plan this trip a little earlier and, and get tickets, it would have been great, but uh, still getting to see it tonight. Quite beautiful. Well, we're pulled up to the passenger terminal here, the uh, executive passenger terminal here at Heathrow. Just waiting on our passengers to show up. Thought I'd show y'all what we can see behind us here. It's not like these private jets have keys. Um, it's just a set number of steps to get the airplane started up. Uh -huh. So you can always pretty much hop in any plane and if you know how to start it up, you could take it. And uh, that's kind of the joke in the aviation industry is, if you can start it, you can have it. But uh, here we go. Let's uh, let's start with turn our battery on. Then we'll come over here, turn our master on, check our enunciators, check our fire bell. That's good. Turbine start, and that will get the APU started booting up. Once the APU is up, then we'll connect the rest of the power. I won't show you all the steps because I want to keep this plane. <laughs> right in front of us is the uh, Concorde. Concord. I'm going to try to zoom in for you, but I don't know if it's going to get close enough. Anytime now. Yeah, some radio. Flight level 340, 62 north, 40 west, 1756. Six zero north five zero west one eight four four Vesmi one nine two four. Flight level three four zero six two north four zero west one seven five six six zero north five zero west one eight four four Vesmi one nine two four. Antibandari contact Gander on 127 or backup 8864. All right, uh, where do you want that report again? At center for Where do you want us to call them or when do you want us to call them? Uh, stand by one. She just had it. I just couldn't understand what she said. Did you? No. Contact them now. I will contact them now. I want to... Good day. I want to 7.9er. Good day. Again, radio. Yeah, get a radio. Just got the switch. We're at flight level 340. Again, Roger. Uh, we didn't get a uh, 30 west position report from you. Could you go ahead? Yeah, I, I... Oh, jeez. Right now we are, uh, it was 6240 north at uh, 1756. 60 north, 50 west, 1844. And vest me at 1924. He was asking for the previous one. Yeah, I know. Okay, so we're going to confirm it was 62 North, 40 West, 1756. Is that correct? That's correct. Okay, Roger. Call overhead 50 West again on this frequency. Go ahead. I will call again over 50 West on this frequency. Enter. All right, so you just saw the full exchange of how the uh, Atlant North Atlantic crossings go on these position reports. Um, it's actually not too complicated. Uh, I guess we're close enough to Greenland here that we don't actually have to worry with the HF radio. It seems like our, our normal radio is working. But uh, 
just in case you did hear him give us uh, two frequencies, so 127.9er for Gander Radio, and then a backup of 8864. And we take that 8864, we, we can tune that in our HF radio, and uh, let me see if I can turn you around so you can see what we're looking at here. Second. I don't know how well you see. So we got it set to manual UV, and then it's it would actually be 8.864, not just 8864. So that threw us off for a little bit because neither one of us had used one. But this looking one. out here, or not recently. Not this one. Um, what you can see out here, this is uh, Greenland, and I guess a shoreline? It's the ice flow. Is that an ice flow or a shoreline? This is all ice. Awesome. So, yeah, this like is broken, broken ice. Broken here. up ice flows here. And then if you look out just a little bit, I don't know if y'all are going to be able to see it, there's, uh, there's all the mountains out there and uh, out in front of us. So about to cross right over the southern tip of Greenland. I kind of wish it was nighttime so that we could get some of that uh, northern light action like we did the other night. But uh, that was beautiful. So excellent uh, view here. It's gorgeous here. And then uh, just as mountainous as I imagined. All right, so this is with my field of view on this little GoPro set to narrow. It's as much as it'll let me zoom. There's the ice flows right underneath us, and then just out there on the horizon, you can see all the mountains. And right out here, some mountains as well. Snow looks awful deep. Yeah. If you could, if, if, if you could tell deep depth. <laughs> if you could tell. I mean, uh, you can, I well, guess what we're really seeing is clouds that are forming as that air comes up over the, the tips, and, and so it's smoothing it out, making it all look really soft, powdery. But uh, the the whole island, or yeah, island, is is uh, blanketed in this low-level clouds with the mountains peeking up over the top. Absolutely beautiful, and uh, a place I'd love to visit, but not right now. Right now we're we're nested, warm and toasty for our long five-hour leg back over towards the states. We're gonna stop in um, Goose Bay coming back in we just don't quite have enough fuel to make it into uh, Maine to clear customs so it just adds one more leg but it it ensures that we're safe and not pushing the limits you know make sure we're making the right decisions not the not the easy ones just crossed the Canadian coastline and uh, heading into Goose Bay. We've got about 20 minutes left, so we're about to start our descent. But I just want to show you all identified. a quick little video. Here's the coastline on the north border, or I guess northeast side of Canada. And uh, a lot like Greenland, except a little bit more color. leg of our journey um, been a beating so far but uh, it's, it's almost over we're just passing off of the east side of New York City there you can see and it, yeah, I mean it's as far as the eye can go, see there absolutely beautiful to see at night but we're tired ready to get done with this trip and uh, get to a hotel, get some sleep, and I'm ready to go home and see the family tomorrow, so that'll be really nice. And I'm sure David over here is ready to go home and see his family. Oh, yeah. 1951, clear direct yeah, one. So. We'll, uh, we'll catch you next time, but thanks for watching Flight Life. Have a great night.